If you want to learn how to play late, then this is a guide for you. In this video, you will learn how to play late from 0 to 100 in 15 minutes or less. Similar to my beloved hero, you can see the video right here. I've been playing quite some leads lately and I have some tremendous win rate, not only in this patch, but generally throughout the years. What we will talk about in this video are starting items, landing stage, skill build, game plan, mid-game itemization, and who do you want to play with and against, you know, friends and foes. If you're new to the channel, hi, my name is Jeff. I'm a 7 game player in the Europe region and what we mainly do in this channel is actually learn fundamentally the support role and most importantly how to lane stage with many, 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 many heroes. Before we start the guide, what I want to say is that if you are stuck in your bracket and you want to grind and see your full potential, especially support, make sure you click the link down below and join our 6 month coaching program which is almost guaranteed that will get you to the next level and you'll be able to play support at its best. So so what are we waiting for? Let the timer start and go. Leech, just like Crystal Maiden, is a lane dominator that his strength comes mainly from using high damage nukes and while they are slowed, you keep right clicking enemies. As a result, for you to dominate the lane, what you need is many, many, many mangoes and even more many clarities. And most importantly, you need patience. So for starting items, your starting build should have two sentries, a stick, three tangos, a fairy fire, a clarity and a branch. So that's the first split I would suggest. Or two sentries, one branch, six tangos, two mangoes, one clarity and one fairy fire. So a little bit more consumables without getting this extra stick. Of course, you can buy starting items, you know, something like a wind lace, but the most important thing that I would advise you is to at least have one branch, because if you have this plus one stat, what you'll do is you will gain one extra armor. You will go from one armor to two armor. And of course, you will always need two sentries, one to block your camp and one to dig towards your own small camp. In your also starting items, what you want to do is always keep sipping more mangoes, more clarities and more regen as your main strength once again is you spamming a lot of spells and for you to do so you need to have a lot of mana and constantly be able to regenerate mana. There are two ways of laning states. You play versus a range position 4 or you play versus a melee position 4. If you play versus a range position 4, something like a Skyrath Mage for example, which is pretty trend right now, I would advise you to just trade with him all the time. What you wanna do is actually Frost Blast all the time and while they are slowed, you wanna right click them again and again and again. Because, you know, usually the position 4 heroes are pretty strong as heroes. So if you don't harass them to get them out of the lane, what they'll do is they'll focus your position 1 and this is something that we don't really wanna do. If you play versus a melee position 4, something like a Nyx Assassin, something like a Clockwork, you really actually want to dodge them. And if they're playing on the jungle side of the map, what you want to do is play on the other side of the map and focus the enemy position 3. So what you want to do is dodge them completely, Frost Blast the enemy position 3 and actually right click him as much as possible. In case you play versus a Rubik with Boots or a melee position 4 that doesn't really want to trade inside the Crip Wave because, well, he can't because he's not that strong and he tries to cut the wave what you want to do is actually follow him, use Frost Blast and try to right click him as much as possible. One rule about the position 5, and this applies for the position 4 as well, is that if you trade really good with the enemy position 4 or 5, what you want to do is keep doing that. So if he's under a creep wave and you slow him, he can't really fight you back because, well, you have a huge creep wave. So if an enemy support tries to cut the wave, try to actually use Frost Blast and slow him and hit him as much as possible. Now you're level 2 and I would highly advise you to keep the skill point. To be really honest with you, 9 out of 10 times you will have to skill Frost Shield rather than using Gaze. But there are some times that maybe you don't have the mana or Gaze will actually secure the kill whereas Frost Shield will not. Frost Shield is a great spell because in case you trade with an enemy support, then you can always trade better in a 1v1 scenario. Let's say you play again versus Scarath Mage or versus Wisp or something that's not as strong. You can actually, even if you're lower HP, out trade him because you have Frost Shield. So you deal extra damage and you receive so, so much less damage. So you can actually favorably trade with your opponent's support and burn all the resources. 
Frost Shield is also great spells in case you or your course gets jumped on because just because you receive so much less damage, you can actually trade fights inside the creep wave. So for example, your, your position one gets jumped on, what you can do is actually Frost Shield him or what you can do is you can frost shield yourself and run down on the enemies. Actually, one trick I've learned is that you can bait enemies to jump on you. Before they commit on you, let's say you play on the jungle area and you're a bit exposed, but this is all a trick, right? What you can do is before you get jumped on is you use frost shield so they can't really disengage and they kinda have to commit on you. What ends up happening though is that they will waste all their resources trying to kill you with their spells and their right clicks but most likely they will not succeed and they will waste a lot of time, a lot of mana and a lot of consumables. Of course for you to survive that the key item in the lane stage for you to achieve that is raindrops. No matter what support you play raindrops is the most important things and hopefully you'll be able to see that in many 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 clips. I cannot name how many times, not only as leads as Disruptor, Crystal Maiden, you name the support I have survived, raindrops have saved me not only in the mid game but in the lane stage and especially in the lane stage, it's super important to have a raindrops. Now if you play something like a Hoodwing and an Axe, probably raindrops it's not really gonna do anything but if you play versus Karath mate versus a Mars raindrops are actually the item to go and I highly advise you to pick up this item as fast as possible before I actually name skill built in the laning stage I will have to say one more time that Litz is not a stat dependent hero rather than you need a lot of consumables a lot of mangoes a lot of clarities a lot of raindrops and a lot of tangos because your main source is actually to use spells constantly have enough mana to use spells and constantly right click the opponents while they are slowed from frostblast Level 1, obviously, 99% you will actually skill Frostblast. And level 2, you want to get Frost Shield with a few exceptions. For example, they try to run away and you're about to secure the kill, you know, but you have to skill Gay, so you're gonna drag them back and you're gonna secure the kill. From there, it totally depends on you, what you will skill on level 3, level 4, and level 5. Level 3, you can also go for level 2, Frost shield. Let's say you have a Slark and you play versus a double melee, what you can do is you can actually go for Frost shield level 2 because there's a lot of trading going on and if they commit on the Slark, a hero that relies on right clicking as much as possible, it's gonna be great. Or you can just go for the 1-1-1 one, one, one build by level 3 as you can, you know, you can almost kill them and you need that last, that last attempt, that last extra half second from Gaze to actually secure the kill. I'm gonna say that again, what you will skill after level 2 is totally up to you, it, it depends on the situation. No matter what you should choose, what I would highly advise you to skill build is by level 5 you should have 1 level in Frost Blast, 3 level in Frost Shield and 1 level in Gaze or 2 level Frost Blast, 2 level Shield, 1 level Gaze. And then what ends up happening is you will get ulti at level 6, max shield, max gaze, and then you will max the blast. In terms of the talents, I would advise you to get the frost shield on level 10, gaze on level 15, and frost shield on level 20 and level 25. By now, you should win the laning stage. Again, it's pretty simple. First of all, do not get caught in the laning stage. So what you want to do again, position 4 range, harass him, position 4 melee, Harassi position 3, if he drags the wave, you want to follow him. That's the game plan in the lane stage and constantly bring grids and bring raindrops and so on. What's the game plan though in the mid game? Number one and most important thing, defend towers. I cannot stress this enough. This is one of the differences between Crystal Maiden and Lich, being able to defend towers. If it's a tier 1 in the mid lane, if it's a tier 1 in the safe lane, you have to defend it. By defending towers, what ends up happening is that they waste a lot of time and your team actually has a lot of time to scale and farm, whereas enemies waste their time. I can't name how crucial this is. You should defend every single tower. That includes, yes, the mid lane tower and the tier 1 in the safe lane. So if you play versus heroes that can just kill the wave fast and usually they take towers by right clicking like a Lina, like a Shadowfiend, like a Nature's Prophet, then you're the best hero to defend 
towers. If you play versus Pagna, probably you'll have a hard time, but you can still do that. In case you feel that if you try to defend towers, you will get caught, what you can do is you can actually frost shield, as you can see here in the Mars example, and you can actually run away. So frost shield the tower, drag the creep wave away from it, and start running as safe as possible. And of course, as you can see in this clip, raindrops is the most important item once again. Other than defending towers, you want to play around heroes that want to go in or generally play aggressive. For example, heroes like Primal Beast, Lestrak, Huskar, Mars. These heroes go usually really deep and you want to play behind him and use as many gauges and most importantly, as many frost seals as possible. These heroes fundamentally are going to receive a lot of damage so your job is to constantly be behind with really good positioning and constantly applying spells and constantly try to use a shield and try to use gaze but do not, do not get out of position. You are a priority for your opponents. Lich is super important, it's a super defensive support and if they see you, they're gonna jump on you and most likely you are the first target they will attempt to kill. What I wanna say is that in the team fights, you want to use Chain Frost as fast as possible. Some people wait for some really cool Chain Frost so it's gonna bounce right and left, but a small piece of advice is do not hesitate to use Chain Frost, even for one bounce as it deals quite a lot of damage even if it strikes one. So please don't hesitate, just throw it, 6% slow, 350 damage level one, definitely worth it to secure a kill. Once again, I'm gonna say that do not hesitate to use Chain Frost even if it doesn't bounce at all. Three, what are you gonna do if no one pushes towers and nothing happens in the game? So you don't really have to play around anyone, everyone is just farming. Then what you wanna do is two things. Push creep waves with your frost shield. So frost shield is gonna clear the range creep and half the melee creep. So that's a good way to actually split push. Or what I would advise you also is to play around the hero that is the most exposed in the map. Let's say your position one is farming in the enemy safe lane and he's alone, he's exposed, no one can TP there and he's pretty deep. What you wanna do is play behind him in case we are gonna jump on him, just like an Abaddon would do in the mid game. Personally, I find Leech to have extremely useful spells. As a result, you're a target priority, as we said before, to be killed by enemy team. If they see you, they'll just jump on you. So defensive items are the keys to survive and turn fights around. Early on, the items I would advise are Tranquil Boots, a Wand, a Fluffy Hat, and of course, Raindrops. Raindrops, 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 you know? Going into the mid game, it highly depends. For example, if you play from behind and you play versus heroes that can just run at you and kill you, you know, you play versus Ligon, you play versus Phantom Lancer, Weaver, Phantom Assassin, then you might need to go for an early Ghost Scepter because this three or four seconds that you're gonna be immune to physical damage can actually turn the fight as you delay the opponents. If you play versus heroes that you want to disengage, like a Slark, a Ricky, you will definitely need the four stuff to get out of the spawns or to get out of the smokes. All these items are specific to what your opponent wants to do. And for example, if you play versus heroes that can just burst you down with spells like a Void Spirit, then you just want to tank up, maybe you get a double flat hat and of course, Glimmer Cape. If you play versus heroes that can just jump on you and kill you and they have some kind of blink like a puck, for example. A small piece of advice is while Ghost Scepter, Glimmer Cape and Force Up are all great defensive items, probably the best, you can always go for a humble Etherlands only if you have a solid laning stage that will get you a lot of gold. Etherlands, in a way, is cast range, and cast range is actually survivability. You shouldn't forget about that. But if you play from behind, then you shouldn't go for Etherlands and should go for the defensive items. Again, Force of Glimmer and Ghost of Glimmer. Now, I've seen there is another build that personally I don't like, which is getting the dagger and the shard, and you wanna blink in, you know, use a Chain Frost, use a Shard, but I think that this is a worse version of Crystal Maiden, as even if people have BKBs on cooldown, I don't think it's fast enough, it's so random, maybe it bounces elsewhere, maybe they can just blink out, maybe they can just use Glimmers and Force off. whereas Crystal Maiden, for example, you can see the guide here, is so much easier to perform the Blink Shard BKB ulti, because they cannot really disengage, it's just too much slow, too much damage, and it's not random. He got me, dude. 
Why why does he do that on me man? I'm gonna i I'm gonna first all the bitches. Ra Oh Stop. This is the last part of the guide. These are just some heroes that I prefer to have in the laning stage when I get to play leads. I really like right-clicking heroes because leads provide a lot of time and a lot of defense that sometimes heroes like Ursa and Slark really struggle. These right-click dependent heroes. For example, in the laning stage, I prefer heroes like Phantom Assassin, Slark, Troll. I think this lane dominator and at the same time, these right-clicking heroes like Ursa are all great with leads. In the mid game, you prefer heroes that just want to go in, like a less rock, like a Visage. Heroes that they are really tanky and they're gonna go in and they might get exposed. Therefore, a spell like Frost Shield is gonna make the difference. Now, a hero that I hate in the lane stage is Enigma. You should always ban Enigma because Enigma is a hero that doesn't even give you the opportunity to lane because he just constantly pulls the wave back and you can't even harass the opponent. In the mid game, you hate heroes that have a lot of spells, Zeus, Puck, Void Spirit, Tinker, and of course, even though it's not a spellcaster, heroes like Antimates, because usually you can't really hide from an Antimates, he goes through the backline and he can just abyssal and kill you, and of course it's a bit hard, as he can actually use counter spell for gates and so on. Lastly, what heroes do you want to play against? And it's really simple, heroes that want to right-click you. So, Lifestealer, Chaos Knight, Naga Siren, Troll, Legion Commander if you duels. These are the type of heroes that you're really good against because you're good against versus heroes that deal a lot of physical damage, high physical damage heroes. Did I actually make a guide for elites in 15 minutes or less? It doesn't actually feel like it. I feel like I'm just talking for ages. But if you did like the guide, make sure you just press the subscribe and the like button as it helps us a lot to keep making these guides. Then you should join our six month coaching program, which almost guaranteed that will get you to the next metal, if not medals. Go down to the link, click it, fill application, and I'll see you soon.